So I was supposed to come here last, uh, well, yesterday after uh, after lunch or, on, or after dinner on six. But I couldn't, couldn't make it. So we're here now in the morning. Calves are doing good, it seems. Just tried counting them. Got about 50 some. We got some nice grass here. Literally just, just here, nothing <laughs> over there, but it's good for the camera, you know? Oh. So I brought my trailer, but I just got to bring the water over the, over to the other side of this fence here. <laughs> Calves haven't quite figured out how to cross through gates yet. They like to run in the opposite direction, as you can see. I don't know why. Some of them would just tear off back there, you know? Like, absolutely no idea which way to go. You think you'd see your mommy go towards your mom? No. We're gonna go this way and cry. We're gonna go plow right through the fence. It's hard when they're young, these calves. Fucking nut bars. So we grazed it way too short here. Way too short. And over there, they barely touch it. So it's kind of hard, <coughs> hard to manage this here. But they are eating the bed straw. You can see that that bed straw has been clipped. So I don't know how much of that can they can eat, but. Apparently they're eating it. There are some buzzards over there. I gotta go look what the fuck you're looking at there. There's always a buzzard around. Making us nervous. You guys figure it out how the gates work some calves are really growing i can notice right away they're stocking up the older ones they're growing this weather is not limiting them so that's a good sign Little ones will always be little, short, but yeah, yeah, we'll see in a couple months. They're going to change. So my brother and I were talking about, well, I had mentioned to him how I wanted to renovate uh, one of these pastures just because it's pretty piss poor and it's pretty pathetic. So what we wanted to do is come here with some herbicide sprayed out. We can usually use regular Roundup, but Roundup doesn't really kill this, um, this bed straw. It spreads through a rhizob rhizobia. It spreads through underground root systems. It's really hard to kill, but we have some pretty strong stuff, some Blackhawk that kills just about anything and everything. So. We're going to wait for this to come up a little bit more. Or even just now, I'll come and spray it out completely. Obviously, mind the wet spots. We're not going to spray into water. So that's a bad sign. The cow's coming to look for a calf. Anyways, we're going to come spray it out. And then no-till drill in oats with underseed with grass mixed into it 
just so that we can get those oats to grow tall and hopefully shade everything let the grass grow beneath it and then we're gonna just clip it with the cows a little bit we don't want to clip it completely we want to keep those oats still growing well hopefully we have enough mass and enough height in the crop to uh to make a nice residue on the ground so that we're not uh, uh, bare ground and uh, hopefully we can grow something a little bit better than just weeds so we want it so that we have enough height and enough mass that the geese are gonna be uh, obviously not uh, willing to land in it because of the you know predators and stuff can hide in taller grass better so that's what they don't like I mean they will land in tall grass we've seen it but uh, if there's a bare ground bare piece of ground next to it they're gonna they're gonna rather go there so um, something like that I just want I want to grow something I know there's lots of lots of manure in the ground lots of phosphorus there's lots of lots of everything that a crop needs to grow the ground hasn't been broken everything's sealed off with a no-till drill we can get right in there and put that seed right where we need it without disturbing the soil very little anyways and then uh, hopefully we can establish a crop and uh, it'll be a benchmark for future uh, future renovations hopefully and then maybe we get our water once our water crops are set up we don't have to uh, move them every day so another nice thing so this would be a good example of nothing but weeds so we're seeing sour ground here with signs of moss strawberries and bed straw and nothing but other weeds so we have nothing established here cows don't come here well, they do they're allowed they don't come here but there's nothing to eat so that's not suppressing the weeds it's just promoting the weeds and that's exactly what's happening here it's just continuous weed growth um but with fertilizer with cow manure on it so there's a number of ways we could do this we could try reseeding it just broadcasting it with the four-wheeler seeder and getting the cows just to push in the, the seeds with their hoofs by walking on it doesn't prove to be too effective uh from what i've seen as maybe it takes longer than i i anticipate but I have not really seen any, anything I've reseeded has not uh, shown any regrowth. So the other option is just to completely decimate it, desiccate, and uh, put something, put some new seed in the ground. So I think that's what we're gonna do here. This area, especially, We get into low spots mind you these fields are almost impossible to drive through with the tractor we got bushes growing this is what we tried to do we tried uh so we bring in bring in bales of hay that has seed in them and we try to get the cows to you know the cows eat that and they hopefully spread the seed around in their manure so this is a thick this is where the bale was so this should be most of the seedings should be around here but it's just very thick Oh, look at that. <laughs> Bed straw right on top of it. The 
problem with best straws, it's so competitive. It grows so fast. Look at this, look how tall it is. We should have that in freaking clover by now here. So obviously something has to be done. I'm getting actually quite frustrated with just waiting and thinking, oh, we'll just do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, put some seed on it, do a different rotation, we'll do this, but no, nothing's, nothing what we're doing is working and it has to be, I don't want to come plow it. I don't want to come disc it. I just want to, I think no-till will be the way to go. We just have to spray it out and uh, start from hopefully scratch. So this is the new field that they're in. Basically what's happening is the geese are coming in very early before the grass is even growing, staying there while the grass is growing and just continuously clipping and bringing that grass flush to the ground. So that suppresses the, the, the plant from growing uh, because it's continuously pecking at it. It suppresses it to the point where it is in direct competition with the weeds and the weeds have uh, more of a advantage over the good the good plants that we want like the clovers and, and the well not much but vetch and uh some maybe some uh kentucky bluegrass and maybe some orchard grass so that's what happens and then once the uh like the bed straw is superior and uh, ahead of all the other crops it just takes off and when it takes off it's able to reproduce reseed and spread its seed around and double making more and more uh, of itself suppressing further the rest of the crop so that's what's happening it gets ahead of everyone and so now we're coming with the cows the cows are coming to suppress the weeds, but they're not, they're not eating the weeds. Well, we see on the other side they were, but it's to the point where everything is too short and it's suppressing everything. And the weeds are just gonna come back faster because that's what they do. So in this case, we have to uh, really just monitor and watch it so that they don't graze it too short, but look at look at how it is. It's already too short. Uh, the next thing would be not even to put them in here. They'll just leave it. But then the established weeds are just going to take over and there's going to be even more weeds. So we're in quite the pickle with uh, trying to put more cows and try to make uh, a farm more efficient. Because we can't just skip a year just ah no no cows this year we're just gonna skip it you know we need we need the, the cows to be out here every year and that's just how it is but we're in just a it's just getting to the point where it's getting it is has been going down less and less every year and it's to the point where there's going to be nothing soon and uh That's how it is right now. So we're gonna have to start with something. Start with bee seeding, see how that goes. We're just gonna be taking basically this half pasture out of rotation. So it's gonna get sprayed out, seeded. We're gonna watch how it grows and uh, obviously take necessary actions as it starts to grow. Uh, but we're talking two, three months to see what it does. If we're actually going to kill the weeds, are we going to suppress the weeds? Are we going to promote new growth of the kind of weed that we want, kind of grass we want? So. These fields up here, they get worse too because the geese are on it the most. Um, usually second cut, second turn uh, around mid-July or mid-June, uh, end of July. Then we start to see uh, the grass really start to pick up again kind of recovering from the suppression the geese put it into so uh it does get better but i just want to see more residue taller growth 
and uh, trying to establish a better crop here, something more diverse than, you know. I remember when I was young coming here with my dad, we had, frick, we had two feet of just, you name it, just vetch, uh, the, the uh, birds with trefoil, the, everything, clovers. I was obviously a lot shorter, so it was a lot taller in my mind, but it was just a, such a thick crop that it was it's just so, imp it looked like a hay field. It was very impressive. And the cows were there for a week, if not two weeks. And I, I, that's what my dad did. He kept them in for two weeks. And uh, that gave so much time for all the other pastures to grow up that he could just keep doing it like that. And it worked, it worked for a long time, but now it's, to the point where it's not working anymore and we're not getting that that yield like we used to so uh is it because our seedings are old now is it you know a combination of that and the weeds just getting ahead of ahead of that old seeding i don't know i know that seedings do deplete over time you can't just keep a, a seeding forever and think that, you know, these aren't native grasses. These are grasses we, we put in and they do have a life span versus the weeds that are always here. So, yeah, it's just, this is a bastard of a thing to have. But this is mother's nature's way of covering the ground. You know, there's no way of naturally, you know, it, it's just what it is. When you got bare ground, something, there's always seed in the ground that's going to cover that bare ground. And then it's established and it just keeps reproducing. Uh, anyways, we got to do something and uh, I'll keep you posted on what we do. So wait for this to fill up. Everybody wants grass. So. Herford bulls separated. And I gotta go try to give this bottle to this bottle calf. Well, he's not a bottle calf, his mom's just not very, very good. And he's had probably nothing to drink in two days. Very little anyways. Surprised he's still alive. His stomach is empty as empty can be. And he's at that point where he just doesn't want to drink anymore because he's got no energy. So, not very good. Not looking very good. But hopefully we can force feed him a little bit. Get him to get something in his belly. And he'll start thinking straight. But right now he's not really doing that. I should have given the clean here. I gotta come clean here before it rains, otherwise it's gonna be quite sloppy. So he's up and he's looking for the teats, so that's good. Last resort for him, really. Do this or die. Just never seen such an empty stomach. As you can see he's he's in the wrong area, but he's got the right idea, so. His mom is, wasn't very good. She's just all over the place, so. Hopefully we can turn that around with this bottle here. So this calf knows the difference between his mom and the bottle. He refuses to suck on the bottle even though he's starving. His mom was blowing chunks out the back, so. Her udder was sensitive. So every time he would try to drink, he would kick her off, or she would kick him off. Because it hurt, but uh. I got her in the chute now. We got the, we got the milk flowing. I got Buddy to get a little taste. But he's uh, He knows how to suck now. I can confirm that. He just doesn't know where the teat is. He doesn't know that there's four teats, so we got to do the old finger trick. And then last minute, throw in the teat. She likes to kick too. Still got a sensitive udder. Calf just doesn't know how to open his mouth yet. He just uh, looks around, doesn't open the mouth. So there'll be some obvious training 
training required. Baylor Dwayne's not too safe either. He's eager to go. He just will not open his mouth. There. You gotta use your finger as a teat and then last minute you flick in the reel. I don't know, it's just it's so fucking when they get when they get that hungry, they're so impatient, they're just anything that they can suck on, they suck on, so I got a birthday party in an hour, so I'd like to get this done. Mom's not helping. Okay, let's... You got that figured out. We know that. You got to put your head down. There. The teeth's right in front of you. Open your mouth. Latch on. There's a lot of surface area on a cow besides the teeth. <laughs> so there's a lot of ground to cover before you find where the teeth is, buddy. And that's what happens when he's this old and doesn't drink. They go anywhere but the teeth. He has found the source of life. Not only just the front and the back, but the one on the other side. He's found three quarters three quarters the other quarter he had already sucked on that's a little bit that has keep him alive for the past day but he's hungry mama keeps lifting that damn leg too so we're gonna keep them together in the pen now that he's figured it out and he's gonna chase her around that pen until he gets full. And hopefully this is solved. On the back back quarter here, buddy. That's what you need. This one here. Yeah, that one. Milk brings intelligence, so the more he drinks, the smarter he gets. Let's just hope that's right, eh? No, that one's just full. I can feel the milk flowing through. It's a wonderful sight, seeing the calves suck. It's even more wonderful when they're out in pasture doing it by themselves. But in this case, if we were out on pasture, I don't think this would have worked out for them. So, that maybe uh, if they were on grass, she wouldn't have had mastitis or whatever was in her udder. So maybe that's a result of the feed. Who knows, maybe she's deficient something that the grass would have gave her prior to giving birth. It's a lot of unknowns. There's nothing in there, buddy. I wanna say my shoot is pretty, pretty good. I wouldn't mind a better crowding tub would be nice, but the access and the level it's not too high our other shoots way too high up and it's hard for the calves to get in and this is just about as good as it gets so now we're running out of milk <laughs> hey you're not full yet this side oh boy yeah mama's out of milk you stuff two teats in your mouth? Is that what you're trying to do? I'm going to make more milk. So, he's got the taste for milk. I'm going to give him 
this bottle here. Hopefully his mom will make more milk by the time he gets hungry again. Alright, so he drank he drank on his mother. He's got the idea. He's gonna be alright. Just let his mom out so she can eat and drink, make some more milk. He drank about half of half the bottle also, so he's uh going from a completely empty stomach to something in there and for him it's like wow this whole world is finally turned on so he's gonna be getting a lot of energy back he's gonna burn through all that milk in no time and we'll come down after around four or five o'clock and uh make sure he's sucked on his mom again if not do all the process again so I got my son's first birthday party to attend to, so it's about the last of the filming I'll be doing for today. Uh, Cause I gotta go move heifers in the pasture next to the house. So that's the last thing to do. And I can have somewhat of a Sunday. I attend to uh, sleep after this, <laughs> catch up on some much needed sleep. And uh, yeah. Thanks everybody. Thanks everyone for watching. Not many of you, but that's how it is. I like it like that. And hopefully more of you will start watching. Fucking cars full of flies. So yeah, thanks again. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. For some reason a lot of people watch this but are not subscribed so I try to make a video every day I try to do it every day it's the hard part but uh if you're from snapchat or if you haven't if you don't know my snapchat go go follow my snapchat it's steiner bastard s-t-e-i-n-e-r b-a-s-t-a-r-d fast hard follow my snaps I try to do more YouTube now than snapchat I tried snapchat for two months pretty much every day lots of numbers lots of views but I don't know where snapchat goes from there so there's a lot of interaction and stuff like that but you can't post too much on there or the videos just take forever to upload so I don't know I like talking so I'm on YouTube.